Hi, it's Tamara Dennis, and today we are going to be playing with a little bit of our dilution sprays, but we're also going to be creating some texture using papers, and then we're going to do some dripping, and we're going to actually then transform our base layers into an abstract art piece. So what we're going to do first is start with our dilution sprays. And we're really just after a background that is really varied. We don't want anything too consistent. So we're just going to spray and um, trust our instincts with this and just kind of go for it. So the first color I'm using, I think, is um, Polished Jade. The next one I have is the Calypso Teal, which I think is just gorgeous. And then I also have a little bit of the crushed grape that we'll just add in sparingly. And the last one I'm going to add is a newer one for me. It's called the Funky Fuchsia. And it, it is pretty nice. I like the colors of it. So we're going to remove our stencils. And then we're going to go ahead and create some drips. Um, I use my brush a lot and also the spray atomizer. I do like the little ones. They just have a really nice spray to them. And we're going to go ahead and create the drips on here. Oh, I think that's pretty uh, too much of a close up. Uh, well, we're going to have to do it this way. So um, we'll start with the spray, but I also want to have a brush in my hand. Here we go. Okay. So what I'm after is just some different, and not really texture, but just some movement of the paint. Um, just so that we do get a lot of variables in the background. Because what we're going to do is seek out our favorite areas and then be able to play with those. And we're going to do a little bit more. Get some of that moving again. I kind of like where we're headed right now with this. You can see that we do have quite a few different areas that um, have different textures in them as far as um, background layers, more or less. Because we're starting to see through the layers. We've got the stencil and some of the drips. I like that. This was just done on um, 140, 140 pound um, watercolor paper. I didn't put any gesso or anything on it to start with. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to let this dry and then I will be back and we'll start to um, add a little bit of our paper for texture. Okay, so we've dried it. Um, I've dried it, and now what I was, what I did is once it was dry, because I wanted to move some more of that color. So once it was dry, I just took a brush and I just used a flat, dipped it in water, and I laid it across the top and just let clear water drip down. That's all I did, and it created some more patterns. Because what we're looking for in this piece is we're looking for some moments within our background. And I'll, I'll show you, I know it would be nice if I had one completed, but I don't. I've been working on a canvas, it's a large canvas. I'm gonna to try to put this in front of the camera so that you'll see what, what we're looking for. The moments within a painting. And so that's really all I'm trying to find. So you'll see how I drip some of the water down. Now we're gonna lay paper back over the top and we're going to just build some dimension, some texture. I will try to get a close-up. This is a large canvas. It's a 18 by 24. I'll try to get it um, a better close-up. And when I'm actually done with this one, I will try to post it on my website. Um, again, within here, I think you can start to see that we're just after these moments within the background because I am going to go back in and cover up some of this other. I haven't decided if I'm going to write words on here or not. I'll, I'll decide as I, as I go, whatever I'm feeling at the moment. Um, but what I did not want to 
struggled to do is to try and create the moments on the canvas. And I, what I'm trying to say is that I didn't want somebody to say, okay, I will make this one of my circles. What we really want to do is just lay everything down. Um, you know, the, the colors, the dripping, the stenciling. Now we're going to add in some of the papers because we're going to actually take a circle and we're going to try and move around our painting and find the moments that were created unconsciously because I think if we strive too hard, we don't let it come natural and we want perfection. And I think art isn't about perfection. It's really just about those moments that you're able to capture it's almost as though it comes out through, I know this sounds really corny, but almost like your soul speaks to you and that's what comes out. That's what directs you. And I think that's a better way to create, create art than saying, you know, drawing something out and it has to be specific. I really start with an idea, but it changes. It's so fluid through the process. And that is really what I like about um, what I do. I'm not always happy with the end result, but I feel better when I'm done. And um, when I'm able to create art, I feel a passion. I feel uh, alive. I feel as though what I have been able to do really spoke to me. And that is what I would want to instill in other people. It's just not worry about the end result and not to try to plan it out too much. So that was a long speech and I didn't mean to do that. I am just really passionate about enabling other people to um, have that experience where once you're done, it's not the end result, it was the process that you went through to get there. And sometimes I will look at something and my husband doesn't get it, my parents don't get it, but I get it. Because when I was doing that, what I was thinking in my mind, what I was releasing was released. I mean, you know, frustration or happiness and joy, whatever it was, I was able to lay out on the canvas. So at this point, what we're going to do, or I always say we, but us together, I guess, because I'm assuming that you're following along, is to, to um, pick out some papers. And, you know, this was just, I know a lot of people call them their under papers, and that's really what some of this is, just cleaning off some of my paints, my stamps. This was a marbled hand um handcrafted paper. This one I really like. These, I don't know if you can catch, but they have little um, specks of um, glittery. This one's silver. I have some that's gold. Again, just some of those background papers. What I'm going to do is just tear them into pieces, and I'm just going to slap them down. Honestly, the more you're able to allow yourself the freedom to not worry about an end result, I think you'll be happier with your end result. So I'm going to go ahead and go off camera. All I'm going to do is to go ahead, I'm going to use a matte medium and lay these down. The paint underneath will move and that's okay. You'll see when I come back. I like that movement because it gives us some more moments within our background. Um, once I do this, I will dry it and I'll be right back. Okay, so we're back. I went ahead and while um, this, this dried, and then I put in the papers, um, just a selection of whatever I felt comfortable with putting on there. It was sort of, some of this um, was that handcrafted paper, some of it is my background papers, you know. Um, then, as you'll see, I did put some gold leaf on because I did want to create a few more areas or moments within our background that we'll be able to pull from. What I ended up using on here is this old world art gold leafing and it comes in sheets and it's real delicate and um, what you do is you put your glue down first, you let it dry and then you take your gold leafing and you put it on the glue. And I, I did most of it, but I left a spot here so that we you could see this on camera. And it's really simple to do. Um, I know it says you can use a brush. I use my hand to kind of move it around. But all of these little pieces, I keep them because they're really nice to actually add little touches of the gold leafing around your um, work. So let me take this off camera 
And I'm going to dump this into my little thing here. And these other ones, I'll try to move them around. If there's any glue that didn't get covered, they will stick to that, which is kind of a nice thing. I see they're sticking in here, too. There must have been some... Oh, I see. I actually had another area. Let's see if I can pick some of that up. I didn't realize I had another area that I had glued. Now, when I looked on Dick Blick, I've had this gold leafing a long time. Um, this I've probably had at least 25 or 30 years, and it still works. The glue and everything. I was really impressed with it. There we go. Um, but when I looked on there, I don't know what size the sheets are, but it said you get three sheets for like $9. What I had from years ago is it came in here and there must be 20 sheets of it. And I had, it also comes variegated. So I did have some sheets that are variegated with black and some are variegated with red. Let me see if I can grab one for you and you can see it. This is... Oh, look at this. It still has never been opened. Okay. I can tell it's variegated. Oh, it's not variegated. It's silver. I did not know I had silver leafing. Huh. That's pretty cool. This one, you can see all of the little bits in the bag. Um, this one is variegated. Oh, and oh my gosh, I've got a lot of this. There's two packages in here. I, um... Just started to use it. Here we go. Isn't that pretty cool? I don't know if you can pick that up, but it's pretty cool stuff. I really do like it. It can be expensive, at least from what I'm seeing on the web now. My um, parents had an arts and crafts store, so that I know is where this came from because I know I would never have spent probably the money retail to have bought this. So the other thing that I have, and I'll show you another one I was working on, and used a different product, but with similar results. So this one is the Delta Renaissance Foil. You saw how um, this one you actually lay the gold leaf on and just flake it off. This one, you use their adhesive, let it dry 20 to 30 minutes, and then it comes in sheets, a great big sheet like this. There's quite a bit on there. It's not as delicate at all. It's pretty sturdy. And then you just lay it over the top of your glue and you rub your gold leaf off. So it's a different technique. Um, that wasn't quite dry. But I went ahead and I did this one. Just Oh, there's some area in here I don't think I got. So it kind of just shows you the two different um, styles of gold leafing. If I didn't have the other one, I'd probably go ahead and use this one just for the difference in cost. And the other one is pretty flaky and it, you know, you saw how much um, gets wasted. That's how I might grab it and put it back into the bag. But this one has a real nice look to it as well. There is a difference. Um, the other, this one has a little bit more of a brown undertones to the gold. But for what we're after, this is going to work just fine. So it depends on which one you want to try. And of course, you don't have to use either. You can just go over some of this if you want it to add a little bit more um, dimension. Is probably just go over it with a little bit of um, white and a brayer would be fine. I was just trying to give us um, some more, like I said, depth to it. But also areas that we're going to be able to pull from. So the next thing that we're going to do is, this is how I did my last one, is I just grabbed um, some cardstock and I cut circles out of it. I also had a um, tape, and I guess it's masking tape, but it has the nice circle in the middle. So what we're going to look for is moments within our background. And if you start, I don't know if we can get a close-up of this one. Let me try. Um, and I know it's pretty shabby.